Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Pop-Pop. I'm Matt. I'm Daniel. I'm Kelly. And we're some of the veggie boys. And girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies, coming through. Good morning. Welcome back everyone. It's so nice to see you. As you can imagine, we have been having a pretty busy morning. We've got like a hundred different things going on. Uh, just some notable things. One, we've got the animals all taken care of. Two, we got some feed ground for the animals. That was something that really needed to be done. We're probably gonna have to pick more later on in the morning, but we had to grab some sweet corn for an order that was coming right away. So Matthew and I got in the side by side and we went and took care of that. And on top of all that, we also got the farm market all set up and filled up. And yeah, things have been going smoothly, just busy. I came out here to the pepper field right away because we had a few different varieties that were running low back at the farm market and I wanted to get those filled up. So we're gonna get started picking. Now the pepper I'm harvesting right now is considered a sweet frying pepper. The variety name or the type of pepper it's called is Cubanelle. We've raised Cubanelles my entire life. And what's interesting about them is they are considered a sweet pepper, but they actually can get some heat to them. Now the varieties we raise, they don't usually get too, too hot, but I have seen it in the past. A lot of times the flavor of the peppers can really be affected by the weather. In a hot, dry year, a lot of different types of fruits and vegetables have a much more richer flavor, and that's because it's concentrated due to no water diluting it. I've seen it with watermelons and other types of fruit, they get so much sweeter, and it kind of works with peppers too because they get much hotter in a dry, hot year. Now, the interesting thing with these peppers, I've been eating them a lot, they don't seem too, too hot, although up until recently, we've dealt with that, a hot, dry year. But what I have noticed is that these, these peppers in particular, have a beautiful, crisp, sharp flavor, which is in due to the hot, humid, dry temperatures that we've had. The interesting thing is, are the new peppers on the bottom of the plant gonna taste the same? Well, I sure hope so, because the ones I've been eating so far have been amazing. Now, the skin on these is kind of thin, so as you're picking them, you gotta be careful that you're not poking holes in them or anything like that, which has happened in the past, but you know what? Accidents happen, we're all trying to do our best. Altogether, these Cubanelle peppers, they taste great and there's so many different ways that you can use them. If you've never had the opportunity to try them, I'd suggest you do so. You notice it's a little bit sloppy out today. We did receive a little bit of rain last night, which was nice. 
We just went through those huge storms from Debbie and some other systems that we had going through, so we had plenty of water, but it's always nice to have a little bit of extra, especially when things have been so dry. You know, I've been driving around looking for our sweet banana peppers, and the funny thing is we plant so many peppers that I cannot remember where they are. Yeah, that's kind of embarrassing, but it's a problem I'm dealing with, so yeah, it's a big problem. I'm just gonna have to worry about getting sweet banana peppers later. I'll be like, Dad, oh, I forgot to pick them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll say. I know for our very first planting of peppers that we did, we seemed to have a little trouble sourcing seed for the sweet banana peppers. It just never came in and we had to get it somewhere else. So we didn't end up getting it planted with our first planting. We had to get it in our second and third. But that happens sometimes. I just cannot remember for the life of me where we put them. I do a lot of transplants, I'll say that. I just do a lot and I get confused. You know, I like the hot pepper while I was back there and my tongue is burning. I need some milk. Look how beautiful it is in this farm market right now. I mean, look at all this stuff that we've got set out. Ho, ho, ho. All the fresh fruit, all the fresh vegetables. Goodness, this is like one of my favorite times of the year. Oh, it looks like we got plants here, Daniel. It looks like we got plants. Now, the real question is, it's their cucumbers. While Matthew and I were running around this morning grabbing some stuff for orders and picking some odds and ends, Daniel and Dad were back at the farm. They were working on grind and feed. However, they are now out here in the field with me and we're gonna be working on grabbing the pickling cucumbers. Matthew is gonna join us shortly. He just had to make a delivery this morning and then we'll have all four of us back here picking. If anyone was curious, the pickling cucumbers are still doing great. They're producing a lot and I'm still seeing blossoms here. So they're gonna produce today, they're gonna produce tomorrow, and they'll probably be producing next week. Oh boy, that's a lot of picking. So I was recently looking at the comments and I saw that a few people were curious how we dealt with the tropical storm that had just gone through Debbie. Uh, all things considered, uh, we did pretty good. We had some really high winds. We had a lot of rain, close to five inches of rain. And both of those things can give you quite the problem on a vegetable farm. You know, I always say vegetable farm. We do raise certain types of fruit too, but anyway, you guys know what I mean. Uh, when it comes to sweet corn, for example, the high winds can be quite a problem. It could actually knock over the sweet corn. Thankfully, our sweet corn did not run into that issue. It is all standing tall, and we've been able to pick it. Uh, when sweet corn gets knocked over, it gets destroyed by all different types of critters. Skunks, raccoons, uh, squirrels. They really like it when the sweet corn gets knocked over because that's an easy meal. With the wind, that's about all we were concerned about. Uh, the wind can beat up different types of plants. Cucumbers, they don't really get affected by the wind. But for example, our peppers, oh, our peppers can really be affected by the wind. Thankfully, we didn't run into that problem. They're too low to the ground and they really got like stocky and bushy. So we don't have to worry about them being tall and snapped off. So for the wind, the sweet corn was about the only thing we had to worry about and we didn't run into any problems. So that is a big plus for us. And uh, it's one less thing that we have to worry about. Now, all the rain that we had experienced, that's where more of the problems would come through. Uh, if you get too much rain, a lot of your crops can become saturated and they will actually split open. I've seen it happen with cantaloupes. Tomatoes are a big one that it happens with. It has happened with cucumbers in the past but we're not seeing it this year, which is a good sign. Tomatoes are probably one of the biggest things that we get concerned about when we get a lot of rain, but uh, thankfully we didn't have too many red tomatoes. We knew that the storms were coming, so we did our best to pick off as many as possible. And because of that, we saved ourselves from any headaches that we might've had if we had too many ripe tomatoes sitting on the vine. So we were able to counteract that problem by being proactive and all together, we didn't run into too many issues. We didn't have some little sections of field washout, but that's to be expected. They're all fixed up and taken care of. A lot of these storms are no joke. So if you were affected by that, I am sorry to hear it. But here on the farm, we did pretty good. We didn't have too many issues. Probably the only thing we dealt with is what you saw. We were having trouble picking in the rain. But as dad always says, 
Nothing wrong with a good shower at work, right? Yeah, I don't like it either. He, he says it to make it sound like it's fun. It's not too fun. But hey, positives. Cucumbers look good today. I'm sure they enjoyed the rain. Look at that. Beautiful. What we've picked so far looks really, really nice. We're just at about 11 baskets of pickling cucumbers. Just when you expect your crop to start slowing down, it does something like this and just produces like crazy. Now, are these Eureka or Supremo? These should be Supremo. Another quick little update. We're almost at the end of the field, but here again, you see we got even more baskets of pickling cucumbers on this wagon. And what I will note is that they all look beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Right here in front of us, we have about 19 half bushel of pickling cucumbers. We're gonna have to get all this stuff taken home. We're then gonna get it washed and sorted. Sorting this stuff is very important, putting it in different size categories. Some people want larger pickling cucumbers. Some people want smaller pickling cucumbers. And based on the size of the pickling cucumber, that also affects the price. We do tend to get a little bit more money for the smaller pickling cucumbers because it takes more to fill a basket. It does turn out though that those smaller pickling cucumbers, they are the more popular ones. So we seem to sell through them fast. Right here to my left is our last and final planting of pickling cucumbers, regular cucumbers and zucchini and it's amazing that they're all ready to this size. But another thing that's amazing is how far through the year we are. It's just, it's, time is flying. Dad wanted me to go this way because there's something over here he wants to show you. I think it's that one. Over there. That one? Oh boy. Or maybe it's that, I don't know. You don't know, there's a lot of them? Andrew, be careful, don't knock them off the vine. I, I won't. Let's see this. Oh. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Now, if you think back to the beginning of planting time, we had a viewer actually stop by and drop off some pumpkin seed for us. We seeded them in the germination greenhouse and then transplanted them. And this is what we're dealing with. Some big old pumpkins. What's nice is if we drive down through here, I'll leave the camera on, you'll be able to see all the pumpkins that we have growing there. And it's gonna be a lot to harvest, but I think people are gonna appreciate having them. taken out of it. By running these uh, pickling cucumbers under cool water, it helps us to store them for longer if needed. It also allows them to stay fresher longer. Now, due to us selling a lot of pickling cucumbers, we haven't had to store any, which is nice. This doesn't really matter too, too much, but we feel like keeping the crop fresher for longer is so important. And by running it through here, that's a big bonus. Everything has now been washed. We're just finishing up with sorting. We have some smaller pickling cucumbers, medium sized, and then the larger ones. Alrighty, it is lunchtime. It looks like we've got a little bit of leftovers all over the place. We got some enchiladas, halushki, stew. We got some hamburger barbecue. I, I don't know what I want to have. I decided to go with some enchilada that my uncle make, and then a stuffed poblano that my uncle made. Woo! It looks good. After we got finished with lunch, we were inside the farm market for a little bit looking at what needed to get picked. And something that was really obvious that we needed is sweet corn. So we're gonna run and grab some sweet corn. I was just waiting for dad. He was taking his old time. And I was eating some nectarines. Let me tell you, the fresh fruit this year has been amazing. Now this is where Matthew and I were earlier this morning, but we just needed a few dozen of ears to get by and to fill an order. So now we're gonna get an entire bin filled. Now this first bin is for an order, so we're gonna need to do some counting. 
So I'm gonna be a little quiet for this first one, but hell, it's just so much fun. Good too. They always underestimate the beautiful smell of sweet corn. We got a lot of questions as to how we keep track of how much sweet corn we've picked. And the easiest answer is we count. A lot of times each of us will pick to 100 and then call out a number. And then we'll go to like 50s or 20s depending on how much corn we need. And that last bin, we needed 600 ears in it. So everybody counted out 100 and then a 50 and then we were good to go. We always do add a few ears of corn into every bin and every order extra. And not that we need to do that, we know this corn is good, but there's always a chance where there could be a bad ear or maybe a worm could have caused some issues. So we always try and throw in some extra ears just to be safe. Look at the ears on this corn. That bin was pretty full. And a 600 ear bin, that's usually not that full. It's easy to see that these ears are on the larger side. I don't need to count. Nope. Huh. I always feel like I pick faster when I count. Because you know exactly how to play it. Yeah. I know if I'm taking too long. I think I stay focused if I count too. You know? No, I don't need I like to talk to you. My mouth's moving faster than my hand sometimes. When we were younger, that's what dad would say to us. If we would pick as much as we would talk, we'd be done already. Can you believe he'd say that to us? And we knew he wasn't telling the truth because if we picked as fast as we talked, he'd just make us pick more. I'm sure a lot of you at home uh, have grown and raised sweet corn in the past, but the amount of times you've come with me to pick sweet corn, you probably feel like a professional yourself. So look at that. You guys could probably pick sweet corn with your eyes closed. Right, look at this here, sweet corn. See how big this thing is? That's the year of sweet corn. This is the stock or husk that was on the bottom. But this still is a fat ear. Look at that thing. Come on. Whoa, watch out. There we have it. Another heaping full bin of corn. Oh baby. Now that's just for the farm market. And if we got that thing heaped as much as we did, we're hoping we have about 750 to 800 ears in there. And yeah, that's not gonna be enough. But hopefully it'll finish off today. I had some people telling me they came and visited us. They watched the channel and they came to the farm market. They couldn't believe the amount of corn that we go through. But while we were there, I think we sold like 150 ears. So it's amazing how fast it flies out of the farm market, but that's the way it works. Some people will just show up and take a lot of corn or after people get off work, they pick up their sweet corn on the way home. And that's why we need so much sweet corn because if we didn't have it, well, they'd have to get it from somewhere else. And what's the point of growing all this sweet corn if we can't sell it? Before we left, we grabbed a few baskets of white corn. We have someone actually here waiting for it. So we thought it was a good idea to get home fast. We got all the corn unloaded in, into the cooler. White corn, we're gonna be taken inside. That way all the orders are gonna be taken care of. And we've got fresh sweet corn for ourselves. Now, although there's not a lot of people at the farm market at this very moment, we have been insanely busy today. So my job now is gonna be here helping out any way I can. If customers need help, if I need to box up tomatoes, whatever the case, I'm gonna be here to help people. Hey everyone, I am now home. We ended up just staying at the farm market for a while. Didn't have too much else going on besides that. I am currently home making some dinner. Oh yeah, it looks amazing. One thing I did want to mention, we had a lot of people coming in the farm market uh, just saying how happy they were with everything that we had been raising. That's always nice to hear. You know, when we eat so much of our own stuff, we kind of know that it's good, but it's nice to hear that the customers have been enjoying it. That's one of the most important things because if they weren't enjoying it, well, we would be in trouble. Speaking of enjoying stuff, we got little Lily over here enjoying some playtime. We got Ronnie enjoying some playtime, my little man. And then we got Callie 
Are you doing some writing? Yeah. How's that going? Doing great. Now that we're all at the table, dinner is served, and that means this is where we're going to end the video today. We'd like to thank everyone for watching, and we'll see you next time. Buh bye bye. <laughs>